I want my daughter, who's six and a half years old, to be able to come up and see the salmon run. That is her right as an American. It's her right as a human being. And you may be wondering why we are showing an old interview of first-time Academy Award winner Jamie Lee Curtis, who just last night won the Supporting Actress Oscar for Everything Everywhere All at Once. Well, that interview was from nearly 20 years ago, the summer of 1993, when Jamie Lee was living in nearby Sun Valley and stopped by Redfish Lake to be part of the much-publicized release of Sockeye Salmon. So what made this release so unusual? Well, the year before, the Snake River Sockeye Salmon Run, which apparently every American must see, according to Jamie Lee Curtis, the numbers of fish returning to Redfish Lake to spawn could be counted on one finger, hot dog finger or otherwise. So that's our three degrees of separation to tell this story. Academy Awards, Redfish Lake, Lonesome Larry, who spawned several generations since and some say is singularly responsible for saving Idaho sockeye salmon. We raise fish, breed fish. From small fries to yearling smolts, millions of sockeye salmon start their lives here at the Eagle Fish Hatchery. We run a nursery and we kind of replace the, the natural production that used to happen in, in Redfish Lake. The fish hatchery functions with a focus on the future, but it also has a storied history. Well, one story in particular connects it to Redfish Lake. You know, Redfish got its name because there were thousands of fish that came back. That was generations ago, when tens of thousands of sockeye would make the 900-mile journey back to spawn from the Pacific, the most arduous swim for North American sockeye. The highest in elevation, furthest south, furthest inland, Redfish got its name because of all the redfish that were, you know, in there. So many salmon, the story goes, you could walk across the water on their backs. But then came the dams, and after decades of declining return numbers, Idaho's Snake River sockeye salmon was put on the endangered species list for the first time in 1991. Then a year later, in late summer, just one fish returned to redfish. You're just one fish. They called him Lonesome Larry. This first arrival is a treasured sight. As a representative of a species that's almost gone, it, it's, it's very special. We're glad to see him back and hopefully some others that have started to trip will also make it. Well, they didn't. It was a shock, but I mean, it was a shock we saw coming. And that shock sparked a movement, which began when Lonesome Larry was moved to the Eagle Fish Hatchery. A broodstock savior program was hatched, where Larry's sperm was used to fertilize new generations of sockeye. And yeah, and he was the catalyst that certainly brought an awful lot of attention um, to the plight of, of Redfish Lake sockeye. Which is why, even before the fruits of Lonesome Larry's labor could be felt, in August of 1993, dozens of people, including Jamie Lee Curtis, this is Cecil, make, ladies and make, gentlemen. Make, make. they themselves returned to Redfish to watch yeah. <laughs> and help release. The eight sockeye released today represent the future of the run <laughs> and to begin restoring the species. Dwindling numbers. And it's worked. Since then, Snake River sockeye salmon have rebounded. 2022 was, was our largest return since 2014, and we got just under 800 adults back. And thanks to what's happening at the Eagle Hatchery, many share the same genetic code as Lonesome Larry. We put, I think it was close to 1,000 fish in Redfish Lake last year. All inspired by one Lonesome Larry. Yes. Lonesome Larry, a legendary story, sure, but also a cautionary tale. What if you guys did nothing? There probably wouldn't be a redfish like stock. I doubt there'd be any uh, sockeye in redfish. Okay, I gotta make a correction. I said 20 years ago, I know it's 30 years ago, but Jamie Lee Curtis just looks so good. It couldn't have been 30 years, right? Couldn't have been. Also, Lonesome Larry got his name because Phil Counts, the Kuntz, I should say, that you just saw in that old piece from 1992, his daughter named Lonesome Larry, Lonesome Larry. That'd be Allison. The fish that saved a species, kind of like the fish that saved Pittsburgh without the basketball and disco and Dr. J. You know, Larry wasn't the only salmon removed from Redfish Lake in 1992 to jumpstart the breeding process. There were about a dozen or so taken to the Eagle Fish Hatchery in the early 90s. And they still have several milk samples cryogenically frozen should something catastrophic happen to the species. It wasn't an overnight success, though. Through the rest of the 90s, fewer than 10 sockeye made it back to Idaho each year. It did peak in 2014 with more than 1,500, but a heat wave wiped them out, wiped out that progress in 2015. We averaged fewer than 200 returns each year since, which is why the sockeye salmon are still under protected status on the Snake River. 
They did, that 800 that did return last year, it pales in comparison with the 4,500 in 1956 before most of the eight dams along the Columbia and Snake Rivers we put in front of them.